Hey guys, Cello Guru here. I was trying to use a new camera, but it didn't work. That's okay. My word for 2022 is adaptability. So we can do this. Now this is going through a different platform. So it's new for me. It's not gonna be normal. You guys are gonna have to, I think, allow for your comments to be shown in StreamYard. If you just click yes, I think you'll show up here on StreamYard. I'm on StreamYard, so comment. Let me know if you can hear me and if it's working. Okay. This is gonna um, this is gonna be played later as well. Okay. So if you're watching later, hi. I don't know how this is gonna go. I'm gonna try it for today. Okay. So here we go. St. Kilda Wedding. Okay, I have Renata Bratz. I gave you guys the music on Cello Nation Live. Here's the book. I always want to promote it because I always use it. And I think it's great. Renata is amazing. She's done workshops for my groups. She, she did tons of um, sessions for my daughter. When my daughter was growing up, Renata lives in Santa Cruz. Like, I don't know, half an hour south of here. It's really cool. We used to play a Monterey Symphony together. So um, you guys comment on here if you're in here. I can't see who's in here now. So I'm just going to do my classroom in here and see how it works out, OK? But definitely write comments. I might have to wait till I go to Cello Nation Live to see the comments. I'm not sure. Write the comments. Write where, where you're joining us from, OK? All right. St. Kilda Wedding. Hey, there's two people. Yay! So you have to enable yourself to be able to write comments or something and then let me know where you're joining from and who it is, okay? So fun! Yay! Also, any questions that you have, you can write in the comments as well, okay? We're talking about music theory on the cello. Yes, we are. So St. Kilda Wedding is our piece, okay? So um, let's play it. And then we'll talk about it. We're going to play it kind of slow. One, two, ready, go. kickboxing video with some guy and uh, it was so much fun because I just did kickboxing along with this guy I don't know right he was teaching the class and um it was just a 15 minute video but I was like oh my god this is so much fun to do this with this guy so I want to make sure I played first with you guys today make sure I play a little more right but now I want you to um think about what key we are in okay so you guys know we're in the key of D, right? Because the chord says D above the chord chart, right? On the first bar. And then it ends in the key of D too, right? It says D above it. It's telling us, hello, I'm in the key of D. All right. So it's for us to figure out what that means, right? We know, Adrian says, right, right. 
Shoe from Alaska is in the house. <laughs> so we have Minnesota and Alaska. I love it, you guys. Okay. By the way, I'm going to mention to you guys that I am having a special VIP day um, coming up. So I might want to tell you guys about it. You guys might be interested in it. It's it's one day at my house um, with only five people. I'll tell you about it later. But um, so for now, for the key is D, right? That means two sharps. How do we know that? We just memorize it. We've played a ton of tunes in the key of D, right? They always have two sharps. It's always the same sharps, F sharp and C sharp, right? So you want to think about your scale that you would play for F sharp. I mean, for D, let's do it. We can do three octaves, okay? And we're going to go up with your thumb when you get to the top octave. Ready? Let's just do it straight, quarters. One extension, two, four, and then one extension, two, four. Okay, you ready? Ready, go. extension and your extension right okay so that top octave that's your top octave you goof around with that don't worry about that we're never going to use that in improv that's the third octave usually we just stay down here and go maybe up to fourth position that's about it at least me anyway so that's why that third octave it's fun to put it in when you're doing a scale but you're not going to need it for your improv okay especially when you're just starting out in improv right we're going to start with simple parts okay so you guys know me we played the melody right after we play the melody what do you think is a good thing to do now it, it should be something that's basic the easiest thing we can figure out to do because we haven't improvised that much right or you guys haven't maybe right so the next thing to do would be to make up what kind of a part. Adrian says arpeggios. Arpeggios is really good. Let's do even more basic than that, Adrian, right? Reading the bass part in real time, right? So you make a background video of this either on your cello or on the piano or something, and then you're going to um, play a bass part over it, with it, along with it, as it troops along, right? So you can make up a rhythm that you're gonna do for the bass just to get used to it, right? So that can be, um, we got four beats in a bar, right? Can't forget that. So four beats in a bar with a D. Let's say four Ds, two As, and two Gs. So we're going to just do um, quarter notes. Now you can make up a rhythm and make it last four beats if you want to, you know? It could be three. you want to do you can make it as simple One, two, three, four, like that right but whatever it is it has to go over the main melody part that you recorded okay so let's try that right now you try your bass line and i will play the melody with you but first of all let's just do the bass line together like a simple bass line we're going to do first half twice quarter note bass line, okay? Stay on the bass, or you can add the fifth if you want. One, two, ready, go. Easy, right? Okay, so now let me play the melody and you play that bass line. One, two, ready, Go. Were you able 
to do it. Yeah. From there, you could make your base part more fun. If that was too easy for you, you have to figure out where you are, right? So if that was easy for you, make your base part a little bit harder. Give it a little bit of rhythm, right? What if we stay on the root note and do a fun rhythm like... to your level wherever you are it doesn't matter and i'm gonna play the melody okay uh and you play your bass line along with me this first half okay and we're gonna do it twice because it repeats okay ready you got your bass line you're ready remember four beats per bar right one two ready go <laughs> to follow along with the bass line right in the chat if you can follow along okay um looks like we got three people on here i don't know who the third pe person is but check in let us know who it is and whoever's watching this later uh write in who you are right on the comments okay people should be able to see this on youtube and on cello nation yeah i think so um okay so now Adrian, were you able to do it? Uh, Shu, were you able to do it? Let me know in the comments. Oh, here comes someone writing in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is, let's do the second half with the bass line, okay? Figure out what you're gonna do on the bass line. This says show, oh. Adrian says yes with eighth notes. Okay, good. Um, so you can do eighth notes then. So let's do the second half, right? Which is gonna be two, three, four, two, three, four. Adrian, if you want to add the fifth, three, four. Why is that gonna work? Because across the string is a fifth, and you want the fifth of the um chord to be a part of your arpeggio right root third fifth right so the fifth is always going to work right okay so you can make it harder for yourself by adding the fifth or you can just play your eighth notes all right we're going to do the second half of the piece all right you ready okay second half starting on bar six one two ready go second half, Adrian. Uh, I'm going to do second half with you eighth notes, okay? All right, starting at bar six, we're going to do eighth notes like this.
that's how it's going to go with the eighth notes, right? And if we do the eighth notes with the fifth, that's one, two, three, four. So that was bar six and bar seven, right? Four of the root and four of the fifth, right? That's one way to do it, okay? You can goof around with that at home, figure out how you want to do it. There's a really cool thing that's called chopping. You might go, you might do a chop in there without that hard rhythm, which could be like this. you learn to chop your group is going to absolutely love you because it gives some rhythm here's how i do it so you see it's going to be down up then you go towards your bridge and you just throw it down and freeze like that you make like a weird sound and then put your finger on the note beat of the bar is the chop right and then the extra thing that you add is that up bow that's the movement you throw it down and then you pull it up that way so it sounds like this ready go chopping you don't have that technique yet you can go it's a down and it's near the bridge that's equally as fun rhythmically i think if you're doing it in a group have you guys ever done chopping before um it reminds me of when i asked my student um who was well versed in scottish music and irish music and she played all over the place I asked her like what the proper technique was for chopping something. And she looked at me and she goes, there's no proper technique for chopping. <laughs> so it's very messy. You just goof around with it. Make sure you're hitting a third beat. Like that and play the note. There's quite a few improvising musician uh, string players around here. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of normal around here, but I don't think it's normal in the rest of the world. Okay, so that was a little bit of bass line. Now let's talk about arpeggios, guys. I can't see who the third person is on here. You guys write in the comments if you have anything to write. Okay, so now we're going to do the arpeggios, okay? D, F sharp, A. We got four beats per bar, right? Fourth note can be whatever you want. Maybe it's another D, an octave D, right? Let's go with that because that's fun. If you don't have that, you can always go back to your first note, right? Root, third, fifth then root again, right? Four beats per bar, right? My suggestion when you're starting out is when you have two chords per bar, like in the second bar, you just two, do two quarter notes. Adrian says she did a few, but I don't know what, if it's chopping or not, I don't know. Um, two quarter notes and two quarter notes when the bar is divided up, okay? Again, this is a messy study. You get to do it how you want to, but this is your full arpeggio. And then when the bar is divided up, two plus two, okay? So let's try that. Let's try the first half of it with the four quarter note arpeggios. Ready, go. <laughs> Two, 
ready? Go. <laughs> with you okay the same bass we just talked about one and i'm going to sing the melody one two if i can ready go <laughs> against the bass make sure you're doing it right okay all right so now when you have that arpeggio four note arpeggio you know you can test yourself if you want to do the arpeggio in the second bar you have to double the rhythm right because there's only two beats per chord in the second bar the a chord and the g chord right so you could do a one five <laughs> quickly go there, right? That's what bass players do all the time. It sounds like this. When you're going up, right? That's one, five, one, right? That's always available to you when you're looking at a chord chart. It always works, okay? Barring or playing open and open, okay? So now that second bar we were talking about, right? So you could do... You could do your complete arpeggio. How could you do your complete arpeggio? You could do it with eighth notes instead of quarter notes, right? So it has to be twice as fast so you can fit four notes in because their arpeggio has three or four notes in it, right? So it can be like this. A, C sharp, E, A. If you can't remember that, you can stay on A or you can stay on the root and fifth, right? This is just for those that can. All right, so it's going to be A and G. G, B, D, G, or O, 3, O, 4. Okay, you get it? So the first two bars are going to sound like this. With that in mind, maybe you're going to try this faster. Or maybe you're going to try the root and the fifth like we talked about. You ready? One, two, first, half. So we did a bass line, very simple. We did a bass line with a fun melody and maybe a chop on it. So the first way was bass line. Second way was maybe put a chop on it. And just goof around with that a little, right? Or the full chop. that is 
in that full chop bass part. You guys know what rhythm it is? right same thing you did right just has a little bit of a fun chop in it okay so we did those two things and then the third thing that we did was we added arpeggio notes right quarter notes right so those are three things that we did now i want to talk about one more thing which is kind of really fun which is once you start to know your arpeggios, you want to push yourself. Now, it's not always that you want your solo or what you're playing to sound like the arpeggios. It's that you want to have them accessible. You want to be able to whip off the arpeggio because if your ear decides it wants to use that arpeggio, it can use it then, right? It's just perfunctory. You just whip onto that arpeggio. That's why we practice those within this piece, okay? within these pieces. So now we're going to use parts of the arpeggio that we practiced, okay? And we're going to make a counter melody to this piece, right? So that would be something like that's not so busy because arpeggio is pretty busy, right? Especially... <laughs> Right? Those are just rhythms with the three notes that you already know in your arpeggio, right? Those are just like repeating rhythms. But what I want to have you explore right now is playing a counter melody to this, right? So it could sound something like this. You're going to use the arpeggio, um, a little bit of it, and then land on one of the notes in the arpeggio, okay? So I'm going to give you, let's see. <laughs> Let's do eighth notes for the first two beats and then a half note, okay? Or if that's too fast for you, just do two quarter notes and a half note, okay? So two quarter notes and a half note could sound like this. You see how beautiful it sounds already? All I'm doing is using the first two quarter notes of the arpeggio and then a half note on the next arpeggio. Now in the first bar, it's all the same chord, right? It's a D. So three, four, those are all from the D arpeggio, right? And then in the second bar, that's the A arpeggio. That's from the G arpeggio because that's the third beat, right? You get that? you to land for a half note on one of the arpeggio notes. That's basically it. You ready? Okay. One, two, ready, go. going to do a half note and then we're going to do two quarter notes okay every bar half note two quarter notes half note two quarter notes all right you ready let's try it ready go <laughs> Let's do the first one, this one. Two quarters and a half note, okay? Let's see how that goes along with the melody. Sorry if my voice croaks or I go off pitch. All right, I'll try though so we can hear it. La 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 la. One, 
two, ready, go. La 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 all you know is a few of the notes of the arpeggio or all three notes of the arpeggio but you're going to use those come up with the rhythm that you want to use simple is really gorgeous on the cello even if you're just playing a whole note you can play let's try and play the third okay and that's going to sound like this because those are the thirds. Now, if you're having troubles figuring it out, write down what the third is on your part. Real quick, write it down and we'll do it. So the third of the D chord is F sharp, right? The third of the A chord is C sharp. The third of the G chord is So that's gonna be super, super pretty. You can do any octave you want. Let's try it again, you ready? You're going to do whole notes. I'm going to sing in the wrong key. My, um, I mean, the wrong key for my voice. The melody, and we'll see how it sounds, okay? We're doing whole notes. But if there's two of them in a bar, you have to do half notes, right? So C sharp is only two beats, and B is two beats in that second bar. Okay, you ready? All right. One, two, ready, go. La, 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 la. So now you're creating what we call footballs in the industry, which are just really long notes, but they sound really beautiful and you're making up your part and it's going to go along with the melody. You get that? Yeah. So listen, I got to go teach a class. You guys write in the comments how this was for you. Did you learn anything? Um, do you have any advice for other people trying to do this? You guys are on the front line. You're jumping out there and getting into it. You're getting messy in the mud, which I which I respect, right? So encourage other people to do it. Write a comment that says, this is fun, right? And then we're gonna gradually be building our improvisations just from the notes in the arpeggio and the notes in the scale, which we didn't even talk about yet. We'll talk about that next week, okay? All right, cool. You guys ask me any questions on Cello Nation, okay? Write any comments that you want to. Next week is gonna be Thursday, 1.30 PDT. Okay, Adrian says, this was great. Yay, Adrian. 1.30 PDT next Thursday. Learning is so fun, Adrian says. Oh, good, good, good. Um, I forget what piece we're going to do next week, but it's going to be in Cello Nation. Okay? All right, guys. I will see you next week. I hope you guys have fun with this. Okay? Make, your, make a video on your phone. Play along with it. It's super fun. All right. Bye.